Welcome to the 26th Annual State of the Relationship Dinner presented to you by the Canadian American Business Council. We're happy you've joined us this evening. Now, sit down and get ready for the show. The U.S. relationship with Canada is important because we're neighbors. For more than 100 years, we've enjoyed one of the closest relationships between any two countries in the world. The thing that binds us together as countries is our people. We're not just big trading partners. We're the best of friends. Many Canadians work and live in Texas, and their presence here helps to make our state a better place. In many ways, we aren't just allies and friends, we're family. We used to think of our relationship, oh, well, it's really nice to have, we've got our, you know, our northern neighbors, and but now it is a must have. It's one of great history and significance. Our shared values of freedom and democracy and our strong economic ties bind us together. Our industries and so much more intertwined. The U.S.-Canada relationship is unique and special. It's because our soldiers fought shoulder to shoulder on the battlefield, all the way from the First World War up until present day. We are allies and we are their largest trading partner. But the fabric of this relationship is much bigger and much more important. Families and businesses, tourists and workers have flowed back and forth. Canada is also important as a strategic partner. From trade to protecting our environment to helping create one of the most successful military alliances in history. It is one based on mutual respect, shared values, and economic cooperation. In the Space Shuttle program, our astronauts explored side by side together for the first time. And it inspired our industry to create the first generation of space robotics. We've been building critical supply chains that help us compete globally. They're our number one energy and trading partner. From clean energy sources like hydropower from Quebec and strong manufacturing and supply chains, like having Bombardier build subway cars for New York City's public transit network. The USMCA is just another example of how important it is for North America to work together. It's critically important to facilitate the free flow of commerce and trade between our borders. It is essentially an overwhelming relationship. There is no stronger friendship, partnership, trade relation anywhere in the world. Always remember how fortunate we are to have each other. The state of the Canada-US relationship, hopeful. I believe that we are entering a new era of growth and friendship. We must all come together to succeed. And while we don't always agree on everything, the ties between our nations are truly inseparable. Sometimes there's friction. That in the end of the day, I know it's always going to be the best relationship. And our friendship and partnership will never be broken. I can see that with putting our ideas in common like this between US and Canada, we can do even greater things together. And as we recover from the effects of COVID-19, it's important that we continue to have a strong relationship. To foster, promote, and grow this relationship is critical to our long-term success as nations and as democracies. I think what's important going forward is that we continue to set big goals together, bring the very best that our countries have to offer, and with that, there is nothing, no challenge that we can't tackle. We must look ahead on how to continue fostering a strong, cooperative trade network that benefits producers on both sides of the border. I'm convinced that our strong relationship will help us restart our economies. We have much to look forward to in 2021 as we implement the USMCA to propel the US-Canada relationship to new highs. And I'm so grateful to the Canadian American Business Council for hosting this event, giving us a chance to connect, albeit virtually. Your work gives me hope for the future of our country's sisterhood. We're going to have a good time bringing these two countries together on doing great business. Good evening. I'm Neil McDonald, and we are live on this cold November night from Ottawa. That's Ottawa, Canada, not Ottawa, Iowa, or Ottawa, Minnesota, or Ottawa, Kansas, or Ottawa, Wisconsin, or Ottawa, Illinois, or Ottawa, Ohio, or Ottawa, Michigan, or Ottawa, Pennsylvania or Ottawa, West Virginia, or Ottawa, Kentucky, or 
Ottawa counting ballots. Yep, all those states have Ottawa, but none has the throbbing energy and the sheer raw excitement of the Ottawa I'm speaking to you from right now. Also, this Ottawa is a national capital. Also, it's really cold. So, for those of you who haven't followed my career, I'm not the most famous member of my family. And I'm maybe not the funniest, and I haven't started any movies, and I don't have a million Twitter followers, and I don't even have a very good Burt Reynolds impression. But I am, well, I'm the tallest. I'm taller than all my siblings. And I was a journalist for 43 years, and journalism isn't really about fame anyway. It's about seeking truth and justice. Plus, my mother says she loves me just as much. I'm all alone here. Maybe I should have a laugh track or something. They're a community that works constantly and tirelessly to strengthen the relationship between Canada and the United States. Normally, on this day, we would be coming to, together in person at the CABC's annual gala dinner, but we're doing it this way because, well, because 2020. Look, 2020 has been a pooch. I wish 2020 would just slink into the woods and expire. I mean, our border is still closed for heaven's sake. Americans and Canadians haven't been able to visit one another for fun in months. And visiting the States for fun is a Canadian thing. American gas is way cheaper and the candy bars all have different names and all the service stations sell beef jerky. Racks and racks of beef jerky. And nobody down there seems to pay any tax and strangers actually seem to want to talk to you. Now, happily, the border formal in our own backyards and raising a glass alone. This is a full tux too, by the way, no pajama bottoms. Scotty Greenwood made me wear the tux with the pajama bottoms and the promo for this event because she said it would be really funny, but I told her I'm wearing pants tonight. So, cheers. We'll have some fun this evening. And we ask that you join us by sharing your pictures, your favorite Canada-US moments on social media. Make sure to tag CABC when you do. Anyway, we've got some great guests on hand and I will try hard to be witty and modest and charming. But first, let's step back a moment. Sharing common ground, bearing an uncommon friendship, one rarely seen in history between two sovereign nations. The United States and Canada have long shared a relationship unique in the world, one mutually beneficial to both countries, ensuring security, strong economies, and a lasting friendship among North American neighbors. Canada shares nearly 4,000 miles of southern border with the U.S., and some forget another 1,500 in the north with Alaska. Breathtaking terrain showcasing some of the planet's most serene and majestic scenes, from mountains to prairie, even the five Great Lakes, the largest freshwater lakes in the world. In 1947, President Harry Truman described this unique international relationship this way, quote, it did not come about merely through the happy circumstance of geography. It is compounded of one part proximity and nine parts goodwill and common sense. That common sense seen in the shared responsibility for the stewarding of one of the oldest environmental treaties in the world, the Boundary Waters Treaty signed in 1909. With its wealth of natural resources, it's no surprise that Canada is the leading supplier of all forms of energy to the U.S., including hydroelectricity, natural gas and oil. And in 2019, energy trade between this power couple neared $110 billion annually. In fact, the United States and Canada have the largest trading relationship in the world. Nearly $2 billion of goods and services are traded every day. 
On the democracy front, the United States and Canada have long been allies, sharing common values, fighting side by side in two world wars, in Korea, in the Balkans, in Afghanistan, and in the war against extremists. And as founding members of NATO, the two countries' fundamental support of one another and our European partners has led to unprecedented peace and prosperity in the alliance. But it is often our trade ties that make the Canadian-American relationship one of the most enviable in the world. It started in the 1940s with free trade in agricultural equipment. It accelerated in 1965 when we signed the Auto Pact. In 1988, the U.S. and Canada established free trade between our two countries, followed by the North American Free Trade Agreement, and more recently in 2018, the signing of the USMCA, replacing NAFTA and securing economic freedom for the three countries moving forward. Pre-pandemic, nearly 400,000 people crossed our border every day, and while that number has sharply dropped due to the restriction on non-essential travel, the essential work between our countries soldiers on, with commerce continuing to flow, keeping grocery shelves stocked and sharing critical medical resources. Time and again, we continue to tackle great challenges facing our countries. Earlier this year, Canada and the United States developing a joint action plan to fight the current opioid crisis. Earlier this fall, Canada answering the California governor's call for international help as the American West was ravaged by wildfires. Geography has made us neighbors. History has made us friends. Economics has made us partners. And necessity has made us allies. Those shared values evident in the representative governments of both countries. In fact, U.S. Vice President-elect Kamala Harris went to high school in Canada. Ultimately, the two countries offering the promise of freedom, attracting immigrants from all over the world, some fleeing oppression and others seeking economic opportunity. And that economic opportunity fueled by the decades-long relationship between these two nations, a friendship requiring continued effort and collaboration. Few nations on Earth share more than America and Canadians. Our histories and our cultures have sprung from the same root. Rooted in our common ground, branching into the great economic and diplomatic opportunities our countries have forged together and continuing to grow our uncommon friendship. I know just occasion exactly 25 years ago this week the Canadian government privatized CN the railway went from a big background corporation to a real company, and now it's kind of a Canadian corporate jewel. It was the biggest IPO and, in fact, the biggest transaction period in Canadian history, $2.25 billion. So cheers to CN, a longstanding member of the CABC, to boot. Anyway, Canada and the U.S. have a pretty good thing going. It's been going a long time. There is probably no better or more durable diplomatic relationship anywhere, period. We've taken different paths over the last few hundred years than the beef jerky thing, for example. But we have a common language and a common past and really a lot of common values. I suppose it's become a little cliche to say it's a unique relationship, but that's what it is. Canada and the U.S. are part of the most successful trading bloc on Earth, maybe in history. And we've actually managed to improve that trading relationship in the past four years, which, you know, is a bit of an accomplishment when you think about the impulses of the recently unelected White House. So it's time for a word of welcome from CAB's chairman of the board, Gary Clement. And yes, he's in full penguin for the occasion tonight, too. Gary? Thank you, Neil. It's been quite a year since we gathered in Ottawa last fall to celebrate the state of the Canada-US relationship. Back then, we were delighted to welcome the iconic Star Wars character 
R2-D2 to our VIP reception. I was also delighted that Minister Mary Ng joined me on stage for a discussion of Canada-US trade. And then the world changed. With COVID-19, our members have redoubled efforts to keep our citizens safe, healthy, and working. Our members are involved with manufacturing and critical goods, developing vaccines, keeping the economy working, and connecting people digitally. We have engaged with policymakers on both sides of the border every few weeks during the pandemic. From Minister Baines to Premier Kenney to members of Congress and Parliament, our members' level of engagement has never been higher. And we grew our advisory board, previously a group of former ambassadors from both countries to a world-class group of advisors that includes two former deputy prime ministers, several cabinet ministers, members of Congress, governors, and premiers. Given events for the spring, we also convene crucial discussions about social justice. I am proud of the virtual series we have begun in corporate action on racial injustice. I couldn't be more proud to chair this vital organization, and thank you for joining us this evening. Now to the rest of the program. Thanks, Gary. Keep the get up on. We're going to need you a little later when we present UPS with our Corporate Leadership Award. As I was saying, we literally share common ground. We guarantee each other's security and economic well-being. And it's been a long, strange trip. In 1781, when the Union comprised a total of 12 states, Congress voted to allow Maryland to enter as the 13th state and generously offered to admit Canada, too. As Pierre Elliott Trudeau put it two centuries later, in any event, we did not join, and history has recorded our differences. Sir Winston Churchill had this observation about Canada and the U.S. She claps the American hand with her faith and goodwill. That long frontier from the Atlantic to the Pacific Oceans, guarded only by neighborly respect and honorable obligations, is an example to every country and a pattern for the future of the world. So, it's a smooth, productive, cooperative, amicable relationship which is a bit of a rarity in this world these days. We are grateful to our corporate sponsors who made this program possible tonight. If we were all together tonight in person, the producers would probably make me do the wave or something. But given the type of night this is, I'll have to just perform it myself. So here you go. Okay, that was a bit corny, but I'm alone up here in Ottawa. Indulge me. Thanks to Johnson & Johnson and Google, our presenting sponsors. Thanks as well to our event host committee, Barrett Gold, Lockheed Martin, MasterCard, and UPS. And also our event advocates, Bombardier, CAE, Cisco, TD Bank, Air Canada, and U Group. All righty then. Listen, I want to take a moment to address my fellow citizens living in the United States during these anxiety-making times. I remember when I lived in Washington, I would see references to Italian-Americans and African-Americans and Polish-Americans and Asian-Americans, but never Canadian-Americans. We just got taken for granted, probably because we're polite and we don't really mind. I should pause here for a word about one of the most famous Canadian-Americans of them all. Alex Trebek passed away earlier this month. We've all competed on Jeopardy in our heads, but Alex Trebek, formerly of the CBC, hosted it for 36 straight years and worked right up to the end. He was, as we say up here, a great Canadian. Anyway, there are a lot of us down there in the States, and hang on a second. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hey, Neil? Neil? Norm? Hey, man, listen, Mum wants to know where you are. You tweeted something about moving back to Canada, then you just disappeared. Oh, yeah, I'm in Washington. Washington? What? what? I, I don't even live there anymore. You know that, right? Not Washington. Washington, near the British Columbia border. I'm in some place called Glacier. And get this, there actually is a big glacier here. <laughs> what are the odds of that? Anyways. Canadian Customs wouldn't let me in last month, so I'm thinking of scaling the glacier. <laughs> Norm, you've been in Hollywood for 30 years. Why are you trying to move back? Why are you trying to walk across a glacier? Well, here's the thing. There's a virus. 
It apparently does horrible things to people. You didn't hear? Our president said Kamala Harris is a monster now. So anyways, I've been on the run. Yeah, I'm eating a, eating a lot of beef jerky. Oh, I tell you, it's not as good as it looks. Yeah. You gotta get me out of here. Do you have a mask? Yeah. Hey, that's a good idea. You mean like a disguise, like a, like one of those Nixon masks? No, no, a face mask, Norm. It's against the law not to wear a face mask up here. Didn't you wear one when you went to customs? No. Hey, I know where I can get one, probably. The Glacier General Store. Okay. <laughs> well, try that, and then try crossing again at customs. Listen, when you do... Can you bring me some of that beef jerky? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can have all mine. I have so much jerky. So much jerky. Okay. All right, man. Call me when you get across. Bye, Norm. Okay. See you, Neil. Okay, enough fun. It's time to turn to someone who for some reason thinks she can boss me around. Scotty. I mean, this event is sort of her gig, and... She's fun, I guess, but let's face it, she's kind of intense. Everything's about the bilateral relationship. You know, the relationship this, the relationship that. She calls and says, hi, Neil, we need to talk about the relationship. And then she tells me she knows a lot of really powerful people. I'm actually a little frightened of her, if I'm going to tell the truth. Anyway, Scotty is in Washington tonight. Washington, the city, the other capital. Scotty? On behalf of the Canadian American Business Council, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for celebrating this vital relationship between Canada and the United States. Thank you to our board of directors, our members, our entrepreneurs circle, our advisory board, and to all of you. We really appreciate the support. We're glad you tuned in, and we look forward to working with you in the years to come. Now let's take a moment to reflect on where we've been and where we're going. Bridging the gap between both the public and private sectors, between legislators and business leaders, in the media and on social media, the Canadian American Business Council is the resource for helping to navigate our unique relationship to the benefit of both our great countries. In 1987, during the negotiating of the original free trade agreement between Canada and the U.S., the CABC emerged as a strong bilateral voice, advocating for cross-border commerce. Now, for over three decades, we remain a key leader in Canadian-American dialogue and engagement, standing on our core principles to maintain and create new opportunities between our two nations. Rooted firmly in common ground, we work together to maintain our natural resources, cooperating on the environmental issues facing the globe. We support each other when crises strikes. On dark days like the 9-11 terror attacks, or even more recently during the wildfires out west. Advancing our shared prosperity, we fight against regulatory disharmony, working to build cooperative approaches to the success of our economies sharing our security with an unparalleled military and intelligence alliance. We advocate for policies that advance our mutual security interests. With a dedication to innovation, we champion policies to push forward cutting edge initiatives, serving both our countries as world leaders in advanced manufacturing, high technology, AI, and life-saving vaccines, therapies, and cures. And with the COVID-19 pandemic upending our normal, we continue to work to ensure that the United States and Canada border is open for essential goods, supporting our interlaced supply chains. Our members are business leaders and stakeholders from both sides of the border, from entrepreneurs to leaders of some of the most recognized brands in the world. When trade and policy challenges arise, the CABC is there, convening dialogues and advocating for key issues, central to continuing our unified partnership. And when political seas threaten our unique relationship, the CABC stands strong, working to right the ship. With a long history of advancing the Canadian-American partnership and celebrating our deep-rooted friendship, 
the Canadian American Business Council is committed to preserving and strengthening our relationship for future generations, ensuring that we face the world's challenges together. Scotty also had a chance to sit down with Kirsten Hillman, Canada's new ambassador to the United States. She caught up to Ambassador Hillman at Canada's rather spectacular embassy on Pennsylvania Avenue. Here's a word of introduction, courtesy of another CABC member, J&J. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jorge Bartolomé, and this is my Bernadoodle Santi. It's not very often that the both of us get to wear our tuxedos working from home. I am president of Janssen Canada, the pharmaceutical company of Johnson & Johnson. It is a pleasure to participate in this celebration of continued government and industry cooperation across our borders. With a historic pandemic impacting citizens on both sides of our border, we are proud to be guided by our values to put the needs and well-being of the people we serve first. During this crisis, we've mobilized quickly to ensure supply and access to our medicines, to provide support to frontline healthcare workers, and to enable relief to vulnerable patient populations. We're very proud to work with the government to ensure Canadian access to the Janssen COVID-19 vaccine. Collaborating with government and policymakers to address healthcare system challenges is critical. To that end, I couldn't be happier to introduce the accomplished Madam Ambassador Hillman, the first woman to be appointed Canada's ambassador to the United States. Ambassador Hillman's diplomacy and vision is a significant part of the solution to this common challenge we face. With that, please welcome Madam Ambassador Hillman. Welcome, Ambassador Hillman. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to be here in your gorgeous embassy. Thank you, Scotty, and thank you for coming here to our embassy, and thank you for inviting me to your uh, virtual gala. Absolutely, and we're so far away, but yet uh, able to talk, so that's great. Uh, let's start with what we're asking everybody. What's the state of the relationship currently, Ambassador? The state of the relationship is good. Um, I think it's fair to say, and it's no secret to anyone, that uh, we've had you know some ups and downs over the last uh, few years. It's Specifically on the trade file, there were some challenging negotiations with the NAFTA, but the good news is that we came out with a really great agreement. And in doing so, we built some really strong relationships. I think that what, what happened through that process is that people had to focus on the relationship. They had to focus on why it mattered to them, and they had to focus on why they wanted to preserve it. Um, and that has left a legacy for us in everything we've done since, in particular at this COVID time. I think we've really drawn upon some of those deep friendships and, and, and sort of a reawakening of how important we are to each other as we've been trying to manage this really challenging time. You mentioned the new agreement. Uh, is it in full force yet? And uh, how do you ex what role do you expect it to play in the economic recovery that we're all gonna have to be part of? I think that what this particular moment in history has shown us with a global pandemic is that we all probably need to be paying attention to our resilience, to whether we're sufficiently resilient from a health perspective, health security, from an energy security, from an economic perspective, whether we are able to face a crisis like this. But I think the second thing that we've learned is that no country, not even the United States, can do it alone, that they have to face a moment like this with their partners. And the good news is that we did, right? We had an incredibly collaborative, um, conversation around restricting travel at the border in order to protect our citizens. It's not easy, but it's working. Uh, we've had really good uh, cooperation on supply chains and PPE production, but also just trade in PPEs. So it's, it's shown that, you know, when the chips are down, no matter what, we're there for each other. Is there a moment that really stands out to you that's emblematic of, of this relationship that we share? I. Um, was very privileged and very touched and very uh, lucky to have hosted a very small event here at the embassy uh, last fall for when the play Come From Away was opening here at the Kennedy Center. And so we had people come from Gander, we had people come from all over the United States who had been passengers on those planes. We had members of the, of the administration, the Transportation Bureau, some uh, retired traffic controllers, all people who had been directly involved in that day or those days. People shared their stories. They talked about what that day meant to them. And then we all went and we watched the play together. And I mean, I'm actually getting choked up just thinking about it now. 
It was remarkable because there were people in that room who lost people on 9-11. That evening was something I will never ever forget because I felt like I was allowed into this very special community of friends who are, I think, emblematic of, of the Canada-US relationship. It's, it's full of love, it's full of mutual support. Sometimes it's, there's some sadness in there, but it's, we're family and, uh, and we're deep, deep friends who are always there for each other. Well, it's awards time. CABC believes in celebrating extraordinary accomplishments, and tonight the big nod goes to UPS for its leadership and innovation in cross-border challenges. Scotty would call this work in support of the bilateral relationship. 2020 made the job a lot harder, but UPS kept the packages moving. And you know, we all do love seeing that brown truck pull up outside with our stuff. To present the Corporate Leadership Award, we bring back Chairman Gary Clement. Thank you again, Neil. Tonight, I am honored to celebrate what's best about the CABC by presenting our Corporate Leadership Award this evening. A combination of economic force, shared values, and friendship unlike any other, our bilateral relationship is the most prosperous in the world, and the Canadian American Business Council celebrates the partnership between our two countries. Once every year or two, we pause to recognize extraordinary achievement in the business community with our CABC Corporate Leadership Award. The criteria for selection includes job creation, environmental sustainability, and remarkable innovation. In past years, we have been pleased to honor Campbell Soup, Coca-Cola, Rio Tinto, CN, Johnson & Johnson's J-Labs, and most recently, MasterCard CEO, Ajay Benga, an iconic American company with deep roots in Canada as well. UPS was founded in 1907 as a messenger company and is now a global leader in supply chain services, as well as, of course, package delivery, something that has become even more essential as the world faced lockdown due to a global pandemic. And while COVID has changed many things, there is one constant, that UPS truck driving down the street. There's nothing like receiving that brown box, but you know, for everybody, that box represents something different. And I can tell you that it represents a lot more than a tangible item around the world, it's hope. UPS serves customers in over 200 countries and territories with over 500,000 employees globally, including 12,000 employees across Canada. Their creed, customer first, people led, innovation driven. That innovation spurring UPS to enhance its green fleet, adding an additional 6,000 natural gas powered trucks this year. In fact, over the last decade, UPS has invested over a billion dollars in alternative fueling options. And earlier this year, as the pandemic unfolded, UPS created an entirely new division, specifically focused on the delivery of personal protective equipment and ventilators to medical and health professionals, even partnering with pharmaceutical companies to fly in essential medicines via drone to quarantining seniors. UPS is also trailblazing the way for women, launching the Women Exporters Program to help women-owned businesses tap into the global marketplace. UPS is paving the way for change with its commitment to volunteerism, providing 20 million hours of community service to nonprofits across the world, including over 100,000 volunteer hours in Canada alone. And in a year that has seen intense social unrest in the United States, UPS has advocated for laws that promote equity and justice in the workplace, additionally pledging millions to institutions advancing racial equality. Taking the reins of UPS this year is new CEO Carol Tomei, bringing her financial acumen and insider knowledge of UPS's complex operations, hitting the ground running as the first female CEO in UPS's history. Delivering hope 
and assurance that even during this unprecedented time, companies like UPS are working tirelessly to keep the world turning. I am very impressed by Laura and her team in their uh, commitment to the communities that they serve in, their commitment to their workers, their commitment to diversity, their commitment to making sure that they support and sustain uh, at a personal and human level, the people that they work with. And now, presenting the award, Chairman of the Council's Board of Directors, Gary Clement of TD Bank. To accept for UPS, please welcome Laura Lane, Chief of Corporate Affairs, Communications and Sustainability. Congratulations, Laura. Thank you to the Canadian American Business Council. I am so honored to accept the 2020 Corporate Leadership Award on behalf of UPS. UPS has championed the promotion of strong, sustainable, and inclusive North American trade since our expansion to Canada back in 1975. Recently, I was so proud to unveil UPS's new purpose statement, moving our world forward by delivering what matters. For UPS in the U.S., Canada, and around the world, that means finding ways to keep essential goods and services moving when the world needs them most. It means championing inclusive and sustainable trade and using our voice and our global network to speak up for equity and social justice, not just within our company, but in every market we serve. We know that these values are shared by the CABC and look forward to many more years of partnership with this amazing organization. Thank you for this special recognition, CABC, and to all our Canada-U.S. friends out there this evening, Thank you for the leadership and dedication to Canada-U.S. relations. Today, we celebrate this innovation, dedication, and leadership. Congratulations to UPS. And now, what would a night of toasting Canadian-American relations be without some representation from 24 Sussex? Tonight, we are honoured to have with us Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Hello everyone, bonjour à tous. Thank you all for being here at the virtual Canadian American Business Council's annual State of the Relationship Gala. Today, we take the opportunity to celebrate and reaffirm our two countries' strong relationship. And your participation shows just how closely linked we all are. Our relationship truly is like no other on the world stage. It's built on deep personal connections, strong economic and business ties, and common interests. But most importantly, it's built on friendship. And as friends, we lean on one another during difficult times, and we face our toughest challenges together. United, we've accomplished a lot. From advancing free trade to promoting human rights and global peace and security, Canada and the United States have always collaborated to make our countries and our world a fairer and more equal place for everyone. And today, as both our countries continue to face the health and economic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, our bond as nations is more important than ever. Pour vaincre ce virus et promouvoir la prospérité économique, autant ici en Amérique du Nord que dans le monde entier, on doit s'appuyer sur notre partenariat solide. Parce que la seule façon de relever ces défis importants et de bâtir un monde plus résilient et de continuer à travailler ensemble. Thank you to everyone for being here and helping strengthen our partnership. And congratulations to this year's recipient of the CABC's Corporate Leadership Award. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. Encore une fois, merci. Well, people, that's it for me. All this isolating and distancing has made me a bit awkward at dealing with other human beings. And I'm Scottish Presbyterian. I've been socially distancing my entire life. Anyway, it being 2020, we thought we should probably leave you with some humor. Not Norm stand up. That's too dark even for me. Here's a somewhat lighter take on the relationship. Hello from Washington, D.C. Or as they say on the hill behind me, the center of the center of the universe. <laughs> Everywhere you look in this town, there is no mistaking where you are. It is celebrated at every single turn. You are in America. America the strong, America the free, America our next door neighbor. 
They are our greatest friends, our strongest allies. They are kind, they are generous. They have an uncanny ability to go on at great lengths on subjects they know absolutely nothing about. From 80s sketch comedy. He's in Hey, good day. Welcome to the Great White North. I'm Bob McKenzie. This is my brother, Doug. How's it going? To Oscar-nominated feature films. Rick Harrison. The Canadian-American relationship providing laughs for decades. It seems that everything's gone wrong since Canada came along. Play Canada! Play Canada! It sounds like you're disappointed every time you find out what anthem you're about to sing. Oh, Canada with an export of legendary comics, not afraid to show Canadian pride. We have Justin Trudeau, and they don't. A Canadian standoff is two people trying to go through the same door. Uh-huh. And Canadians will just stand there for hours and be like, after you, oh, no, no, after you. You know, I used to get really upset when I told people where I came from down in Los Angeles, because I always got the same response. Canada? Wow. Now I just go along with them. Yes, Canada. Often a punchline on The Simpsons. Dad, no, it says don't walk. It doesn't matter. They have free health care. <laughs> well, right. Canada is also a favorite topic among late night hosts. Is it Canadian? Basketball's Canadian. Sorry. Invented by, invented by a Canadian, James Naismith. In Springfield, Massachusetts. So sorry. By a Canadian. <laughs> Yeah. No, you know what? This is a classic American behavior. <laughs> and of course, Saturday Night Live. It's a great year for Canadians, the elite North American people. Reminding us all of the dynamic comedy duo our two nations make. Would you be interested in visiting the uh, Canada's National Igloo? Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Congratulations, Canada for making beaver balls your national dish. <laughs> well, I don't know about you. I've had a pretty good time here in my bunker tonight. But wait, there's more. Before you go, I hope you stay and watch one more segment made possible because of the video contributions submitted by many of you. Thank you for joining us to celebrate the relationship. Thanks again to all of the great Canadians and Americans who participated by video. And, of course, thanks to our sponsors. Goodbye until next year when I dearly hope to see you all in person. In 2021, we wish you all prosperity, peace, a vaccine, and some normal. See you then. The pandemic has certainly affected most everything in our lives, even affecting the CABC gala. Like remember all those other times when there was wine on the table, speakers, and entertainment? This year we had to do it differently and do it virtually. But the relationship between our two nations, Canada and the United States, remains strong. This is a hugely important relationship, a hugely important region, and we couldn't do it without places and organizations like the CABC. So thanks so much for having me. I wish we could do this in person, and hopefully next year we will be able to in person again. And as Ronald Reagan once said about our relationship, we're more than friends and neighbors and allies. We are kin who together have built the most productive relationship between any two countries in the world. We have chosen to find common ground. The U.S. relationship with Canada is uh, essential and important because no two countries depend on each other more than Canada and the United States. It touches so many aspects of our daily lives in both countries. We have so many things in common. Our values, our history, as well as the language. We are bound by geography and history. We're going to remain connected. We're in everything together. Canada is values driven. People on either side of our border remind us of it every day. And that's made me a first-hand witness to the strong American-Canadian friendships, and partnerships. The relationship between the United States and Canada is very special. We're both incredibly diverse countries in geography and population. What I see every day in my work are two countries that are the best of friends, partners, and allies. And it's also great to have a good example of how government really can work in a democracy. The art of doing business deals between Canada and the United States has gone unfettered trades, innovates, and progresses together. Exports from Arkansas to Canada count for about a quarter 
of all exports. Canada has been called New Jersey's number one customer. Canada and Puerto Rico enjoy a strong relationship. The potential for Canadian and U.S. companies to work hand in hand is endless. And exciting things are happening every day across our region. President Kennedy said that geography has made us neighbors, history has made us friends, economics has made us partners, and necessity has made us allies. These are sentiments that have stood the test of time. As our closest ally and trading partner, Although at times on the ice we are rivals, we have a very tight bond with the United States. I was actually at the gold medal game in Vancouver at the 2010 Olympics between Canada and the United States. When Sidney Crosby scored the gold goal, uh, the Canadians in that area were just very celebratory and the Americans less so. One thing I really love about the USA is when it's freezing here, I love to get there and enjoy your nice, hot winter weather. My favorite thing about the U.S. is the way we conduct presidential debates in a respectful, calm, and polite manner without any name calling and without interruptions. Tonight, I want everybody to remember hashtag friends, partners, allies. As you can plainly see, it's just an average day in the office for me. Uh, you know, I, I always wear a tux. Now, I'm gonna go find that chief alcohol that I brought over from the border from Costco, and I'm gonna see you guys later. I'm a big fan of how polite you Canadians are. However, you haven't apologized to us yet for having to put some tariffs on your goods. Our relationship is really who we are as peoples. On the Windsor border, across from Detroit, it's family, friends, business relationships. Well, I'm a prairie girl at heart. I love those open skies, those beautiful sunsets, but also, the camaraderie and sense of community. I also can't think of a group of people that are more hospitable, more friendly, and more willing to give. That partnership is more important than ever before. We face many existential threats ahead, from the coronavirus to climate change. An urgent need of uh, a reset so we can get back. We are in this together in terms of getting through the pandemic and making sure that our countries can not just recover but continue to thrive and we've chosen to meet our challenges together. When we work together and we achieve things together, we become awesome. And that's a relationship that needs nurturing and revival. If we look to the future, we have to be optimistic. Now we must work even harder to uphold the spirit of that historic agreement. I look forward to working on the issues and our shared values for the years to come as a member of the USIPG. As all of us look to rebuilding, and finding new paths beyond the pandemic, I tell everyone that Canada will be a part of the solution. From clean energy, to health, to safety, to jobs, to prosperity, Canada will be a part of the North American revitalization. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on over to the CEO, Scotty. Go ahead, baby, it's on you, girl. Thanks a lot, Snoop. Really appreciate it. And thanks also to Neil McDonald. You are a fantastic host tonight. You might have a future in TV, my friend. Thanks to all of the dignitaries also who took time to record messages for us. We'll be uploading their full videos onto YouTube in the coming days, so be sure to subscribe to the CABC's YouTube channel for that. And thank all of you for joining us tonight. Uh, we hope you'll continue this celebration of Canada-U.S. relations, and there's a way to do that beyond today, which is join the North American Rebound. You'll see a link to it on the slide that follows, and I just want to say thank you. Thanks to everyone for making this such a special celebration. All the best.